It's a beautiful time of day. It's 6.45 in the morning, and I can see the sun rising in the mist above the forest. Maurice Laponce regularly leaves his laboratory in Brussels to fly over the tall trees of Papua New Guinea aboard his canopy balloon. Careful, tie it down. Don't forget the clip. OK, that's it. The idea is to land in a clearing where the balloon is stored during the day and overnight, because uh, it's too hot during the day and there's turbulence. It gets windy, which is dangerous for the balloon, which acts like a huge sail. This jungle provides a unique playground. It's a sanctuary for biodiversity. It was always my dream to come to Papua New Guinea. The same goes for most biologists, because it has an incredible biodiversity and a very diverse culture. It's the world's third largest tract of rainforest after the Amazon and the Congo Basin. So it's a phenomenal place for a biologist. Over 200,000 species of insects live in this jungle, found in the hollow of a tree. The back of this leaf is teeming with life. This is a windfall for these scientific adventurers who have set up their laboratory in the middle of this ocean of greenery, more than two days' walk from the nearest town. At their post in Wanang, where living conditions are pretty rudimentary, the scientists attempt to build up an inventory of the seemingly limitless rich biodiversity here. Every day, or almost, new species are entered into their archives, with each specimen more surprising than the next. This butterfly comes from a family that is the largest uh, in the world. So this butterfly is only found in Papua New Guinea and only found in one province. You don't find anywhere else in the, in the world. And it's so big. And when, during the day it flies, you might think it's a bird. Ah, Dominic. Uh, Dominic, can you help me identify these plants, please? These local scientists start out as our assistants. Then they take up the baton and embark on their own projects. The idea is for the expertise to be passed on. Here, there's still a chance to change things. The communities here are very concerned with preserving the environment. We must help them and give them the means to do so. Research projects here go hand in hand with the education of local people. It's crucial that the environments being studied continue to exist. Under one of the laboratory buildings, Maurice has installed a makeshift bedroom. Comfort is irrelevant when it comes to scientific research. That was another short night. Am I still too heavy? Yes, Maurice. You must have eaten too much sago. It's amazing, very nice. Looks like a big moon. In Wanang this morning, Maurice is out exploring. He knows that the early bird catches the worm. 
he has come in search of a very special colony of ants. I'm navigating towards an extraordinary tree called a Canarium indicum. It's home to ant plants. He has spent days scanning the canopy for ant trees. They represent a fascinating partnership between vegetation and insects. It's a mutually beneficial partnership because the ants find shelter and the plants get food. According to my laser rangefinder, I am 33 meters above the ground. Being level with the treetops allows me to make observations which would otherwise be impossible. These are magical moments. I'm looking forward to seeing the laboratory, what, what's inside. It's quite exciting. In most studies of the forest, especially tropical rainforests where the trees are very tall, we only have access to this very limited layer at ground level. But half of the biodiversity is found above ground level. It's very important that we can collect samples and make observations. Using new contraptions like the balloon, we can see how the treetops are distributed spatially in three dimensions, vertically and horizontally, and we can see what the connections are between these trees and what allows for the passage of ants, for example, from one tree to another. Jacob, look, these are the ants I talked to you about. These are Ecophila. I think in top place it's Kurakum. Yes, this is really amazing ah, because yes, yes, uh, yes. they make a leaf uh -huh. nest. So you see how aggressive they are. Yeah. As soon as you have something there, it's attacked. You see, okay. it's amazing. You know, my teacher, but it's like a teacher, and. Uh, Sometimes here, I can say it's like a father too. <laughs> Jacob has found an exceptional teacher in Maurice. Thanks to him, he has gained an understanding of his country's hidden treasures. Inside the plant, the ants are scuttling about, rushing to protect their larva. The insects live in total harmony with their host. The plant makes its network of galleries available to the ants, and in exchange, it feeds off the nitrogen present in their excrement. There are some fascinating co-evolutions. How did a plant come to create this sort of structure to harbour ants? There are some surprising things in nature. What we've discovered here is so unique that it's beyond most people's wildest dreams. I consider myself very lucky to be able to work here.